tale began even when Nehru was alive. Yes, sadly that is true. Now, Nehru was succeeded by Indra, Sanjay, Rajiv, Sonia and now Rahul Gandhi. Patel's children neither inherited nor shared nor benefited from the power he had. Is that just the way things worked out or does it tell you something very important about Nehru and Patel? Uh, I'm not as good close a student of Nehru's life as I am of Patel's life. Uh, Patel was very clear that his son and his daughter should not benefit in any pecuniary way or in any other political way from his the great influential position that he held. Um, did Nehru hold that line as, as strongly? Uh, well, obviously, when it came to the presidentship of the Indian National Congress, I think in the late 50s, uh, when Indira Gandhi was in her early 40s, uh, her name was proposed as president. Nehru did not propose the name, but he accepted it. In other words, he didn't demur, he didn't dissent. No, no, he did not. And perhaps he it would have been more appropriate for him to demur and dissent. Possibly, but then one also has to remember this that Indira Gandhi was, you know, had a difficult childhood, her mother died early, her father was in prison a great deal, so uh, it would have been hard for Nehru to, to deny an opportunity that others wanted his daughter to have. Easy for us to criticize him for not demurring, yeah. but much more difficult for him at the time to do it as a father. Yes, but yet the fact remains that that did start kind of dynastic politics. And nothing of the sort happened with Patel's children. That's correct. Let's take a break at that point. When I come back, I want to talk to you about Vallabhai Patel and the RSS. That's a critical subject. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment's time. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate. An interview with one of Vallabhai Patel's most highly regarded biographers, Rajmohan Gandhi. Professor Gandhi, let's come to Vallabhai Patel and the RSS. In his letters to Shama Prashad Mukherjee, he said of the RSS, it constituted a clear threat to the existence of the state. In his letter to Golwalkar, he said, the speeches of Sangh leaders are poisonous. And in fact, in September 48, he banned the Sangh as Home Minister. Yeah. Does all of that prove that clearly and undoubtedly he was an opponent of the RSS? Yes, he was an opponent of the RSS. Uh, earlier, this is after Gandhi's assassination, but during the 47 killings, when the RSS did play a great part in helping many threatened Hindus and Sikhs, he appreciated that role. Uh, by the RSS, but what you say is absolutely true. Uh, he was uh, not an enemy of the RSS, but he was an opponent of the RSS, and the RSS was his opponent. They were opponents of each other? Yes. The RSS didn't look upon him no. with special favor at that no. time? No, no, no. Neither the RSS nor the Hindu Mahasabha, there was no uh, Jan Sangh or BJP at the time, they were both very critical of Sadar Patel and of course of Nehru and Gandhi. Yet in your book you also point out that there was a period when he believed and he wanted RSS members to join the Congress. Is that a contradiction in his attitude or can it be explained? Yes, it can be. This was, by the way, before the Gandhi assassination uh, and it was in the context of, uh, you know, the, 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 the heated atmosphere that existed at the time and he was hoping that RSS individuals, if they had joined the Congress, that they might actually change their, their uh, perspective, their, their politics. So it so was... Congress would be a conversion for them? Yes, con the, in the context of the Congress that, that they would grow. But you made a very important point. Both the goodwill he had for the RSS, if that's the right word, yeah. for the work they did during the Hindu-Muslim killings yeah. before partition, yeah. as well as his wish to absorb the RSS in Congress, both of those were positions he took before Gandhi's killing. Correct. After Gandhi's assassination, yeah. his attitude to RSS was markedly different. It was so, although uh, it has to be admitted that he said that it was the Hindu Mahasabha and one of its extremist groups rather than the RSS as such that was responsible for the killing. But in the, aware as he was of what the RSS was saying and doing across India at the time, he used the words that you have quoted. And therefore, after Gandhi's death, he was a singular opponent of the RSS. His earlier ambivalence, if I can use that word, had stopped. That would be correct, yes. Now, in 1947, when communal violence spread into and spilled onto the streets of Delhi, Patel was at the forefront of those protecting Muslims yes. and punishing their attackers. Yes, he was. How would he have viewed Narendra Modi's role in 2002 and Narendra Modi's attitude to Muslims at that time? 
I think it's quite obvious. He would have been very disappointed, very, very pained and uh, saddened, uh, not only as uh, an Indian statesman, but also as coming from Gujarat, that this sh should have happened in Gujarat and that the government at the time was not able to prevent it. He would not have believed that Narendra Modi, to borrow Vajpayee's phrase, had fulfilled his Raj Dharma. No, no, he, w he certainly would not have felt that at that time he fulfilled his Raj Dharma. Do you believe that Sardar Patel would have seen something of himself in Narendra Modi? Would he have accepted or recognized Narendra Modi as his ideological heir? Uh, I, I don't know Narendra Modi. I've never met him. I, I can only judge him by what he has done or not done. So I would say that he would not uh, recognize Narendra Modi as his ideological heir. So when supporters of the BJP, sometimes Narendra Modi himself, try and present Narendra Modi as Chota Sardar, as a man in ideological direct descendants from Vallabhai Patel, you would say that is a misinterpretation and a misunderstanding of Vallabhai Patel. If Narendra Modi can grow into that kind of image, it would be wonderful. But by two uh, criteria, I would say he has so far fallen short. One, uh, or rather for two reasons. Uh, after all, Vallabhai Patel grew as a disciple of, uh, under the umbrella of Gandhi and the International Congress. Narendra Modi had his career under the uh, umbrella of the RSS, so that makes a difference in the outlook. But also, Vallabha Patel as an individual was always a team builder. He was always, other people were figuring in his, in his day, in his utterances, in his letters. Other people were prominent in his daily life. He was a team builder. Uh, uh, whether Narendra Modi is like that, I, I would like him to be like that. In fact, the most important thing is at the end of his life, yeah. which was the acme of his career, yeah. Balabai Patel readily and happily accepted number two position. He didn't hanker after number one. Th that is indeed uh, what uh, history tells us. Professor Gandhi, a pleasure talking to you. I'm happy also to have talked with you, Harris.